so our presentation is on equitable access and so we just kind of want to start from where we have been um, in the United States in terms of equitable access and so the first is Leo Hart um, his story is there were um, children in Oklahoma who were forced to leave their homes and so they all went to California looking for better opportunities, but they were rejected there. And so education was really difficult for them. Um, Leo Hart, he created a school, so they weren't so, they could attend school without being so rejected um, by the community. But they were also taught in those schools skills kind of tailored to them so that education opportunity was equitable because of um, the tailored nature of it. Horace Mann, he went around and he looked at the quality of a bunch of different schools and he realized that there was a huge difference between some schools and so he kind of fought for um, making all of the schools um, better quality so that the students could have a more equitable learning um, environment. Catherine Feature, she was kind of an advocate for female teachers and educators and so she put up a lot of schools to teach women how to be better educators and teachers. Um, so this gave not only the students that, the, that those women taught um, better learning opportunities because their teachers were better educated, um, but it also helps um, move the educating occupation from a male dominant thing to something more um, equal and equitable so women can participate in that as well. Um, and then just something else to kind of demonstrate the way that the United States has been promoting equitable access. Um, it says the United States was providing more schooling to more children than any other nation on earth. And so we've had lots of um, ups and downs and um, we're trying to do better at this, but this is just one evidence that we are, um, the United States is doing a good job just trying to make education available to everybody. Um, in the 1900s to 1950s, these are some negative examples of equitable access. A lot of immigrants, they um, were kind of forced to learn English in order to receive an education. Um, this is kind of demonstrated in like tests and just the language that they were required to speak at school. And so that gave them a huge disadvantage when it came to learning, um, just because it is so much more difficult for them and so that's kind of a negative example of equitable access. Okay, one bad example of equitable access during 1915 to 1980 is the story of Sarah Roberts. She was an African American, sorry, African American student and um, she was assigned to a school that was pretty far away from her house and there was, she, on her way to school, she would pass four schools and so her father tried to um, enroll her in one of those cl closer schools to her home and every time that they applied their application got denied and she was not able to go to one of those closer schools. Um, a good example of equitable access is Lyndon Johnson and his Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Um, this made it so schools were required to integrate between races, and otherwise they would lose their funding if they didn't. And one more bad example of equitable access, which Mackenzie kind of already talked about, but students who only spoke Spanish were not able to take the tests, the standardized tests, because they were all in English, and they would not do as well on those tests because from 18-H to the 2000s, student choice was starting to become a big deal, and so it was really um, great that parents and teachers were able to send their students to um, different types of schools, so like charter schools or public schools or um, management schools or alternative schools or homeschooling or whatever type of education they thought they could most benefit from. Um, they were able to send their children there, and some scholarships were starting to pop up, um, but they weren't the best. There were these things called vouchers. 
um, and they made it so that students could attend these alternative schools, but at the um, expense of public schools. And so it made it more equ equitable for some and less for others. Um, but then another good way that we started to become more equitable during this time was to establish a core knowledge curriculum. And that it means that students were being taught the same thing across the board. So we weren't learning a whole bunch of math and no science in one place and a whole bunch of science and no math in another. It was pretty universal and it was starting to become more, um, so we were learning the same things. Um, that kind of leads us to where we are now. There are still some things that we need to work on, obviously. Like we still have states that do not offer tests in a second language. Um, that's what this graph shows here over on the side, the ones in green do and the ones in brown don't. Um, and then there's online schooling that has become a, kind of a big deal for people. Um, those who don't have access to the internet can't access their assignments sometimes and that makes it kind of tricky. Um, so yeah. And then, but we are doing pretty good. There are some opportunities for students to learn their language, learn to learn English in a better and more um, equitable way that is, that is um, tailored to them. Um, and then there's also a committee that meets together just to um, discuss the equitableness of our community and establish goals and to make sure things are headed in the right direction. Now, we want to talk about what can we do as a teacher, how to be an equitable teacher. First, as a teacher, we should be open. So a teacher shows appreciation for other culture and language. So we can learn them, from, uh, uh, we can learn them as a teacher and as, as them possible. And uh, we, make sh we should make sure we get the good education process for teacher so we, we can know we are qualified. Third, we can learn to uh, we can learn to love and genuine care for our students. So we should uh, we should get to know them. So it's always helpful to remember how to help them help students to see over the fence. We can help them to, as giving them appreciate appropriate tool for individual or removing the fence. So. To end the presentation, what must we do? We, we want to remind one of public school partnership commitments, uh, equitable access to academic knowledge and achievement. I will read it for everyone. The partnership develops educators who are committed to and actively provide equitable access to academic knowledge and achievement through rigor and mastery of curriculum content and instructional skills. We believe when we always remember this commitment in our hearts, we can make better society for the future. Thank you.